Hi, this is the first video of the mechanics playlist in which I will be showing you various mechanisms used for different modes of motion. In this video specifically, I will be going over linear motion using four commonly used mechanical components. Before I show you these mechanisms, please let me explain to you the main concepts. So what is linear motion? Linear motion is essentially straight line motion. So you're moving in a straight line in either of these Cartesian planes. So X, Y, or Z plane, doesn't matter. It could be a combination of all three. So in the middle like this, but as long as it's uh, a straight line or it goes one spot to another spot and you could draw kind of a vector line. It's mainly the displacement between two points. Um, that's what we're gonna be focusing on. That's essentially what linear motion is. So anything straight like this, uh, it doesn't matter that is going to be linear motion. So anything that moves in the direction of these arrows. So the first mechanism I'll introduce you to is uh, pretty much the most common um, for linear motion, which is the screw and nut mechanism. In this case, we're using a lead screw and um, lead screw nut. Uh, some, depending on the application, some people use a ball screw with uh, a ball nut, but in this case, it doesn't really matter, um, just as long as it's some type of screw and some type of nut. nut. Um, so essentially how it works is when you rotate the screw, so the screw is coupled to a motor here. When you rotate the screw, it begins to rotate, uh, it begins to move this nut because of the grooves of the screw and the grooves of the nut. So if you see here, if I rotate the screw, it will begin to actually move this whole piece that's connected to the nut downwards or upwards, depending on how I screw it. So um, basically that's how the um, lead screw mechanism works or the screw nut mechanism. Um, there's another way to drive it. So instead of actually um, driving the screw, which moves the nut, um, you could actually drive the nut, which will move the lead screw. So in this case, um, in this application, the reason for it is because it makes the actual lead screw collapsible so you can mount this part fixed onto some component but the actual um, point here will collapse with the lead screw so if you go to here this actual screw would be fixed to a point and the only thing moving is the stepper motor here but the flaw with this is you're gonna have something sticking down the whole time and this is the only thing moving so the reason we drive the nut is so that everything um, moves together instead of just um, one small portion. So in this case, if you see, as I move the lead screw, the nut's moving and it's um, ran using a gear mechanism, but we'll, uh, we'll look into the gear gears later. For now, just focus on moving a nut causes the lead screw to move up and down, vice versa. All right. Second mechanism I'll be showing you is the belt and pu pulley system. This one's used in a lot of stuff, mainly 3D printers right now, um, just because they're light, fast, and uh, easy to, to use. So in this case, the way they work is there's a motor here that is coupled to a pulley. So this is the pulley here. This pulley is mounted onto this belt. Uh, in CAD, it doesn't show this, but in real life, the belt will have grooves that match this pulley and then on the other side there's another pulley that's connected to a bearing so that when you rotate this pulley the belt also moves which will move this gantry here so the in this case the belt is coupled onto this uh, lead screw mechanism here which is um, called a gantry so this system here is called a gantry where you move something across um, and yeah, so basically the belt uh, pulley system is very simple. Basically just moving a pulley, which actually moves a belt also. All right. For the third mechanism, it's uh, used in a lot of things in car steering wheels. They used to use this mechanism. It's called a rack and pinion. Essentially, you're rotating a gear, which kind of grabs onto the teeth of this rack here so the gear in this case is called a pinion and then this piece here is called a rack when you rotate the gear it pushes 
against the rack and causes it to move. So if you look there, it's causing it to move. And then it'd be the same on the top. But yeah, that's essentially a rack and uh, pinion system. It's very simple. Um, used in quite a few things. Then the last system that I'll be showing you is a four bar linkage. So four bar linkages, they don't work exactly like the other three. They don't move in a full straight line. So I previously mentioned that it has to kind of move into a straight line. Um, but it doesn't need to be so as long as it moves from point A to B. That's basically linear motion because you could draw a displacement line. So this vector here shows that um, it's linear pretty much. Um, it's going to one position to another. So in this case, if you look here, the way a four bar linkage works is there's four bars or four linkages. One here in this case, so from this screw to this one. This uh, one link here, so this screw to this one. This base is also a link, so from here to here. And then finally, uh, this um, link here at the back. And so the way it works is when you move one of the linkages at a certain point, it will move in um, to two different points on a plane. So in this case, if you look from here, it will move to a straight line to here. So if I move it again, that's a this doesn't move, but that's basically a straight line. So from here to there, that's a straight line. And it's basically linear. Um, it does do a curve shape, but depending on your actual application, that that doesn't matter because you just want it to move um, from point A to B, which is kind of like a linear point, um, just like the sketch here. So same thing with this. This is uh, two four bar linkages combined together to make kind of a robot arm. But if you look at it, when they're combined together, it moves fairly linear because you're combining two um, two motions together to create one. Um, and it's used a lot in robot arms and actuators um, to achieve linear motion uh, by not using the other three mechanisms I showed you here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit about linear actuators. Please do further research on um, different mechanisms. These are just the four commonly used mechanisms. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.